we're detecting is pretty much from central Edgar County up to about Newport, Indiana, and that is where they've issued. You can see this outline here. This severe thunderstorm warning was issued for wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour. So if you're in that area, you probably got an alert on your phone telling you that there are the potential for some destructive thunderstorms because this appears to be the strongest part of the line of this storm as it continues to move through. So I'm going to step off the screen here really quickly. I think we have a neat tower cam view from Terre Haute looking off to the west you can see that shelf cloud coming in just behind the courthouse so this storm is already racing into the state line it's already starting to darken the sky and it's only going to continue to move pretty quickly you're going to see a lot of picturesque moments out there but try to seek shelter indoors as these thunderstorms come through right now there are no tornado warnings or anything like that but there are still very strong wind gusts associated with these thunderstorms so you're going to want to take these thunderstorms seriously as they come through your location. Uh, farther to the south, we also have a tower cam view in Vincennes. Uh, not much happening down there just yet, but those thunderstorms are also going to be eventually impacting down there in Knox County. So while it's quiet now, I think everyone in the Wabash Valley is going to be impacted at some point by this line of thunderstorms. Now if we can go back to the Storm Team 10 Storm Tracker, we'll zoom in closer and show you where this line of thunderstorms is moving. So we'll just go north to south to show you where it's moving through. It's already making it through Newport, Indiana, crossing the Wabash River into Park County, and then going to be moving into Clinton right now. Just now starting to cross the state line going into Vigo County. So again, Terre Haute, we have about 10 minutes before the worst of the storm gets into the area. Uh, one of the first things you're going to notice is the dark clouds, and then the wind's going to pick up behind it. Then you'll start to notice the heavy rain and the lightning associated with that. Again, there is the possibility of some hail mixed up in some of these thunderstorms, but uh, I've not seen any reports of that just yet. So far, everything coming into the National Weather Service has been down trees. I have reports of that right now from Brockton. Uh, there in western Edgar County. A lot of wind damage also being reported in Vermilion County, Illinois, Seidel to Fairmount to Oakwood. And then we also have reports of power lines down now in Paris. So these thunderstorms mean business as they continue to quickly race off to the east at about 65 miles per hour. Marshall is in some of the worst of the conditions right now. We had one little cell move out ahead of the line here in southern Vigo County, right around Prairie Creek. So you're already seeing the heavy rain here, but it's going to be a few more minutes before the main line makes it into that area. We'll continue down farther to the south. The storm is just now moving into northwestern Crawford County. So if you're in Oblong, this thunderstorm is just to your west. And then we continue down through Jasper County. City of Newton now seeing some heavy rain and some of that lightning, and it's going to be moving down towards the St. Marie area. Alney, you are also under that severe thunderstorm warning, but so far it is rather quiet. Most of the activity right now in Clay County, Illinois. You can see those storms over there around the Louisville area and up towards Bible Grove. So again, the wind is going to be the main threat with this line of thunderstorms as it continues to race off to the east. It's moving at about 65 miles per hour, so you can see that storm continuing to move into the area, and it's just going to continue to quickly race across the region as we continue to see these storms move through the area. Another live look now at the tower cam. You can see the wind starting to pick up here in Terre Haute. Uh, wind going to continue to pick up as we see these storms move through. Again, Vigo County is under a severe thunderstorm warning for this line of thunderstorms that could produce wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour. So these thunderstorms can produce some destructive wind damage if those wind gusts make it down to the surface. So if you're in places farther to the east, maybe you're in Brazil, Get ready for these thunderstorms. They're coming through. Rockville, you need to be ready for this line of thunderstorms. Robinson and Sullivan. We have some of our bigger towns getting ready to be impacted by these line of thunderstorms as they continue to race off to the east. And they're just fueling off that heat and humidity. Here we're taking a live look at our tower cam in Terre Haute again. You can see the camera bouncing around a little bit and the wind really starting to pick up here downtown. And that's exactly what we're expecting. Eventually, we're going to start to notice the heavy rain come through, but the wind, I think, is going to be the main threat we're concerned with as these thunderstorms continue to move in. More reports coming in from the National Weather Service chat room right now of uh, more power lines down in Paris, also some wind damage up in Danville, Illinois. So those are the thunderstorms that are moving into northern Vermilion County. And we're just going to continue to monitor the main part of this line of thunderstorms 
that is moving right into Terre Haute. So some of the strongest part of this line is moving into Vigo County right now. So again, Terre Haute, the time that we've been estimating was around 305 and the storm is already starting to feel its impacts here in Vigo County. Marshall, you're already still seeing the heavy rain associated with this. So what we're going to do now is we'll put some more tracking on this and time out some of those communities farther off to the east as this line continues to race at about 65 miles per hour. And we're getting more reports now of trees and power lines down in Park County. So these thunderstorms already racing into the western part of the area right now getting ready to cross US Highway 41. So we'll continue to advance this out where it's starting to go from here. Another live look at our tower cam in Terre Haute. You can see the camera really bouncing around the trees and the flag whipping right here beside our building. And this is the thunderstorm that we're anticipating as it continues to move through the area. So now as this continues to push off to the east at about 65 miles per hour, in Rosedale, 258. So right now you're starting to feel the impact. Sealyville, 303. Brazil, around 309. So again, these thunderstorms racing for us this afternoon at about 65 miles per hour. Most of Western Vigo County now seeing these thunderstorms and they're just going to continue to race across the county. So if you're in Eastern Vigo County in the Riley area, over towards Sealyville, Brazil, Clay City, get ready for these thunderstorms. They are headed your way in the Blackhawk area around 303. Brazil around 309, Clay City 313 Eastern Time, Jasonville 317, and Cagle Mill 319. We'll continue just highlighting some of these communities as these thunderstorms move through. Going to be farther down to the south now. This is where we're still seeing the potential of 60 to 70 mile per hour wind gusts, but the line looks to be just a little bit weaker farther to the south. Robinson 203, so moving into Robinson here within the next few minutes, that's central time. Sullivan 313 Eastern time, Jasonville 319, and Linton around 330. So we can hear the wind whipping outside the station right now. I don't know if we still have one of our tower cams here in Terre Haute to see what it looks like outside, but I can just hear outside the Storm Team 10 back door that the wind is just really strong here in town. No surprise as we continue to have those warnings be issued. Some new information now coming into the Weather Center. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning. This is going to be in effect for more of our Indiana County. So this is going to be in effect for Clay County, Owen County, Park County, Putnam County, uh, Montgomery County. This is going to be in effect until 345 Eastern Time for the line of thunderstorms capable of producing 70 mile per hour wind gusts. So what you're seeing here in Terre Haute is some of the strongest wind associated with this thunderstorm coming through downtown Terre Haute right now. You can see the trees really blowing in the wind, the flag whipping around and obviously the camera bouncing around. And in addition to the strong wind gusts, obviously this could be knocking down trees and power lines. It's going to be reducing visibility. So if you're just to the east of this line of thunderstorms and thinking about traveling, I would consider postponing your travel until this line of thunderstorms continues to move through because it could get pretty dangerous with those travel conditions as this line of storms keep, kicks through the area. And obviously it's also going to be kind of a hazardous drive if you were to be going under trees because these storms may knock down those trees and they could also knock down power lines. And if it's raining very heavily, you're not going to know necessarily where those downed lines are. So as we look again at the Storm Team 10 storm tracker, this is looping now and you can see that this line just continues to race off to the east at about 65 miles per hour. It continues to just plow across the News 10 viewing area right now. It's along the state line. It's already made it through Vermilion County, Indiana for the most most part Clinton probably under the gun with these storms right now and it continues to just move off to the east. So Terre Haute right now seeing some of the worst of the conditions and this line is just continuing to quickly move off. Some estimations have it moving a little bit faster now at about 70 miles per hour. That's just the forward speed. So when you have thunderstorms moving that quickly, a lot of times you can have the wind gusts be a little bit stronger than that. Looking through the National Weather Service chat room to see if I can get you any new information of damage reports or anything of that nature. We have some hail, pea-sized hail reported southwest of Louisville and Clay County, Illinois. We also have some trees down in Danville, Illinois, and uh, more reports just now coming in. These are from farther west in central Illinois, so we're going to continue to monitor this line as it comes through the Wabash Valley. Again, you're looking at our Brazil Tower Cam. So far, it is quiet right there off Interstate 70. Just to
to move off to the east. Terre Haute seeing some of the worst of the conditions right now, and then it continues to move through Robinson. It's moving into the city now, so if you're in Crawford County, northwestern areas, have seen the worst of the conditions and it will continue to push off to the east. Alney, right now, quiet. You're going to start to notice the dark clouds come into the area and then the wind's going to pick up. So Alney's been quiet so far. Same story for Lawrenceville and Vincennes. Right now, Knox County is not under any warnings, but this line is continuing to quickly move off to the east. So if you're in that area, be prepared for this line of storms to continue to move through. So again, we're taking another look at the storm tracker farther up to the north where we've been more concerned with this longer line of showers and thunderstorms. And this is some of the strongest indications on radar that we've seen. So that's where we're expecting some of those indications of these stronger storms to move through the area, mainly producing the strong wind gusts. We've been hearing the wind whip outside the station, been taking some power hits here at the TV station. So the wind is really cranking outside and it's going to continue to be moving off to the east very quickly. Vigo County kind of in the worst of the storm right now. So if you're watching us right now in Clay County, be ready. This is headed your way. Going to be a strong wind threat for the most part with this line of thunderstorms. Rockville has seen the worst of the storm right now. So if you're in eastern Park County around Raccoon Lake, this is going to be headed in your direction. Putnam County, be ready for these thunderstorms. This is also going to be moving in your direction. And eventually, even into places like Spencer, Bloomfield, and Linton, most of those locations outside of the warnings right now, but that will be changing here over the next few minutes as this line just continues to quickly race off to the east. So I'm going to try to come back up on screen so I can kind of point some of these features out in the thunderstorms. And typically when you see this rotate, when you see these storms come through, that is going to be pushing these line of thunderstorms through the area. So right now we're seeing some of that Boeing segment making it right into the center part of the Wabash Valley. And that's often where you see some of the strongest wind gusts associated with the thunderstorm. So Vigo County is kind of centralized in this line of thunderstorms as it continues to move through. And now you're looking at the live view here in Terre Haute from our tower cam. Visibility greatly reduced. The wind seems to have settled down just a little bit. The strongest wind with these thunderstorms is going to be on the leading edge of this. So you're going to notice the sky get really dark first, then the wind's going to pick up, and then you're going to start to notice the heavy rain and also the lightning associated with this. Some good news is I have not been getting too many reports of hail. This morning we were dealing with a lot of hail threats across the region, but for this line of thunderstorms, it's mostly going to be a wind threat. You can see now our tower cam down in Vincennes. This is non-severe activity right now. There are some rain showers across Knox County, but none of those are currently warned. You can kind of see some of that rain falling down to the surface there. Just behind the tree line. So again, Vincennes, quiet for now, but be ready. This line of thunderstorms is going to be quickly racing off to the east at about 65 miles per hour. Some new information. This is just outside the News 10 viewing area, uh, but at Camp Drake, which is southeast of Oakwood, Illinois, multiple trees down on buildings, and the emergency manager there says that there are people trapped inside. So that is in Vermilion County, Illinois. That is just uh, north of our immediate area, but that same line of thunderstorms worked into Vermilion County, Indiana, and also into Park County. So we're zooming in on that area now. You can see that line of strong storms continuing to push through Park County at this point, and that's the same line that works through Vigo County. Yeah, I think we'll take a photo now of some ground photos of the storms as uh, they've been coming through the Wabash Valley. You can see the ground photo outside here on our TV station. So the worst of the storm trying to make its way through Terre Haute, and it's going to continue to move off to the east. So if you're in Terre Haute and you're watching us now, you're still seeing some heavy rain, but the worst of the storm has pushed to the east. And Patrice is standing by here. She has some information to share with us. Everett, we have some spotty power outages from Clark County, Illinois, all the way through Terre Haute. First Street in Terre Haute is blocked right now. So if you're heading out later today or just down the road, avoid first street there is a tree down covering the entire road also there is a tree on a home on north jefferson street in terre haute we are told everyone is okay but the tree is on the house rosedale road there is a power line down there so please avoid rosedale road so it's first street north jefferson street rosedale road lots of lightning to report and again power outages on and off here and there throughout the area yeah, no surprise there, as Patricia mentioned, a lot of downed trees, a lot of downed power lines because of this line of thunderstorms that continues to race off to the east at about 65 miles per hour. And so if you 
or considering driving, please postpone your travel if you can. This line of thunderstorms has knocked down a lot of trees and knocked down power lines, and you throw the rain on top of that. It makes it very difficult to see what is going on on the roads as you're trying to drive. And we do have some new warnings that I want to bring to you now. Uh, so we can take the Storm Team 10 Storm Tracker back. New warning now includes the rest of our Indiana counties. Everyone now under some type of severe thunderstorm warning. If you're watching us in the viewing area, with the exception of the far southeastern corner of Martin County. But this warning is going to be in effect until 345 Eastern Time. This is the warning that's going to include Vincennes, Washington, Linton. Bloomfield, Ligoti, Shoals, so southern parts of the Wabash Valley. Even though you've got some time before this line of thunderstorms move through, they've already issued those warnings. This is warned now for 70 mile per hour wind gusts and again the possibility of some of that quarter sized hail, although right now most of the reports I've been seeing so far are just of some wind damage. So that's going to remain the biggest threat, I believe, as we go through the next few hours uh, as this line continues to work through. So if we can take our Brazil Tower Cam now, and this thunderstorm starting to move through, you can see at the top of your screen there, that's that leading edge of the shelf cloud. So those shelf clouds form on the leading edge of some strong wind gusts, and that's exactly what's pushing out ahead of these thunderstorms. So even if you're farther to the east, if you're in Greencastle or maybe you're in Clay City, the thunderstorms aren't in your area yet, but you're going to notice that ominous cloud coming through first, and that's an indicator of the strong wind that will be following behind that and then you're going to be getting into the heavy rain as well. I think we have a live photo down in Vincennes. Uh, again, quiet in Vincennes for right now, but that's going to be a different story. You see the rain there. That's just the rain showers that have formed out ahead of this line. The worst of it is going to be still off to the west. So if we can take the Storm Team 10 Storm Tracker back now, we're going to go through and just time out the arrival of these thunderstorms as they continue to race off to the east anywhere from now 80 to 85 miles per hour. That's the forward speed on these thunderstorms. So they just continue to race across the Wabash Valley this afternoon. So right now this thunderstorm has made it into eastern Park County. So we're going to drag this down through Clay County and advance that off. So Clay City. What about a minute? Moving into Clay City right now, Greencastle 316, Cloverdale around 321, Spencer at 324, and then it's going to be moving into Danville, Indiana, which is outside our viewing area, but over there in Hendricks County uh, around 330 this afternoon. Farther to the south, we'll continue to advance that for those of you watching in the southern part of the News 10 viewing area. This is going to be moving into the Hymera area right now, also just now moving into the city of Sullivan. So this is going to be continuing to move through. Jasonville, this is going to be 312, so in about two minutes for, Vin, or for Jasonville. Linton at 320, Lyons 327, Bloomfield 330, and then eventually over into Odin around 346 if this line of thunderstorms maintains its speed and its intensity, which so far it has been doing as it races across the Wabash Valley. Now back here into Olney, you're just now starting to see some of the brunt of this thunderstorm. This storm has kind of slowed down just a little bit on the southern edge of this, so this is going to be the part of the line that impacts Vincennes, Edwardsport, Lawrenceville, Bridgeport, and Sumner. So Sumner at about 218, so in about five seven minutes, five to seven minutes from now is when it'll be moving into Sumner. Lawrenceville, 225 Central Time, Vincennes, 336, Bicknell, 338, and again Odin around 345 if this line of thunderstorms can maintain its speed. So we're going to take a wide look again at the Storm Team 10 Storm Tracker, and this is going to loop it for you so you can just see how quick this line of thunderstorms is racing across the Wabash Valley. In any county this line of thunderstorms is touching, it has produced a severe thunderstorm warning. So if you're watching us right now in the News 10 viewing area, you've either been under a severe thunderstorm warning or you are under a severe thunderstorm warning. Every one of our counties has had one of these severe thunderstorm warnings, and they all have been issued for the potential to see wind gusts as high as 70 to 80 miles per hour. Some new reports coming in from the National Weather Service. There are some reports that uh, widespread trees and power lines down, as Patrice was mentioning, an estimated six, 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts as this line of thunderstorms continued to race across the region. So again, Please postpone your travel if you have something to do, and you can do it later in the night. Wait a couple hours for these storms to move through so crews can get out and assess what's going on because we do have reports of some limbs down, power lines down, and wind damage of that nature here in Terre Haute and I'm sure in many other communities across the Wabash Valley as this line of thunderstorms continues to move through. 
We have Patrice standing by. Do you have any new information for us? There are several. We're getting lots of reports on the police scanner. First of all, these are all in Terre Haute. Lots of internet outages. If you're asking yourself what's going on there, it's Spectrum and Joink. Both are reporting internet outages throughout the Terre Haute area. Uh, on 7th Street in Terre Haute, a pole has snapped. Um, so avoid that area as well. South 6th Street power lines are down and a gas leak. So lots of first responders are heading to South 6th Street. 25th and College in Terre Haute, there is a tree down in the road, that area, 25th and College. Uh, similar situation at Fort Harrison and Hunt on the north side of town, a tree and a power line down. And um, also around 2319 North 25th Street, a power line down. So power lines are very dangerous. Do not drive on them. Don't get out and walk. Uh, just turn around and go somewhere else. So lots of, so as you're driving, walking, whatever you're doing, as the storm calms through, be careful. Look for down trees, limbs, power lines, things like that for your safety. Yeah, and sometimes you can have down power lines underneath down trees. So you may think it's just a tree limb on the road, but you don't know there might be a power line underneath it. So those power lines remain very dangerous for anyone that is going to be traveling out there as this line of thunderstorms continues to race through. And obviously, while it's still lightning, it's going to take crews a while for their own safety to get out and try to clean up some of the damage Earlier that is time. occurring out there. So again, you're looking at the Storm Team 10 Storm Tracker, the time now 3:13. Indiana time. We have a line of severe thunderstorms racing across the Wabash Valley. It extends all the way from northern Park County all the way down into southern Richland County now. And most of the lightning with this thunderstorm, this is kind of interesting to me, that most of the heavy lightning is now being detected down around Clay County, Illinois, and also around Olney. So that's where we're seeing the most lightning. And oftentimes where you see a lot of lightning, you, that can also be an indicator of where there's some hail associated with that. And there was reports of pea-sized hail in Flora, Illinois. So down there around Richland County, you may see a little more hail mixed up in some of these thunderstorms, but that's not to negate the strong wind gusts that are occurring across the Wabash Valley. We have these heavy thunderstorms moving through all of Crawford County now. This is starting to move into Lawrence County, Illinois. If you're in Sumner, Bridgeport, this is going to be moving in within the next few minutes. The city of Sullivan, you're now starting to see the worst of this storm, I'm sure, as this radar data, just a little delayed by the time it gets into the weather center. Jasonville starting to see the bulk of this thunderstorm. Also up into Brazil, you're into some of the worst of the conditions. Center point as well. And this is starting to make its way into western Putnam County, and it's going to continue to cross Highway 231. So now you're taking a live look, or you were taking a live look at our Brazil Tower Cam, and you could just see the heavy rain that continues to fall, and the wind is just whipping that around. So that is why visibility is so reduced. If you know anyone that's coming back to Terre Haute from Indianapolis, maybe, and they can kill some time up in town, I would have them stay where they are until they continue to move through the area because this line of thunderstorms is racing right up Interstate 70 and it's just going to create some low visibility for any driving that's going to be doing anyone that's going to be doing any driving across the Wabash Valley. So I want to recap the active warnings that we have in effect. Basically, anywhere that's out ahead of this line of thunderstorms, you have active warnings. So Lawrence, Richland, Crawford, and Jasper counties in Illinois, we continue with a severe thunderstorm warning until 3 o'clock central time. So that's all the way up until the top of the hour. Although if you're in Newton, if you're in Robinson, things are going to start to settle down here within the next few minutes. Some of the worst of the storm has already made its way through. But down here in our southeastern areas, that's where you're still awaiting this storm's arrival. This warning is in effect until 345 eastern time, and again, it's for the possibility of 70 mile per hour wind gusts as this line races off to the east at about 85 miles per hour and there may be some quarter sized hail mixed up in there as well and that line right now basically extends from the northeastern part of Knox County up through the city of Sullivan so if you're in Carlisle it is going to be moving into the area as well and then it is going to be making it through Clay City up towards Brazil and into Putnam County where we also have active severe thunderstorm warnings again everywhere out ahead of this line can anticipate strong wind gusts, potentially upwards of 70 to 80 miles per hour. So we do have uh, News 10 Bureau Chief Nathan Springfield down in Vincennes, and he can give us an update on what is happening down there as they await those thunderstorms. 
whatever it that is right i am here on um westport just on the other side of the river from vincent's this is in lawrence county illinois and i'm just going to step out of the way here take a look at this you can see that storm system moving in here um right now it's not too windy it's not too rainy um it's uh it is kind of sprinkling earlier when the uh, severe thunderstorm warning was issued the tornado sirens were going off i'm not for sure if that was here in westport or if that was in vincent's again as i am standing right here on that state line but uh, take a look at your screen if you're not doing anything right now as you can see that storm is pushing in the sky is very dark it's kind of the uh the perfect way to describe this right now is that calm before the storm that's what i'm seeing right here in westport illinois which is again just on the other side of the river from vincent's stay with storm team 10 download the storm team 10 mobile app to stay updated on the latest watches and warnings and we will of course continue to track these conditions live throughout the afternoon reporting live here in westport nathan springfield news 10 everett back to you Thank you, Nathan. As you saw him there in Westport, that shelf cloud behind him, that's going to be the first sign that those thunderstorms are moving through kind of an ominous sight as it continues to work across the Wabash Valley. So again, we're just going to take a wide scope of the Storm Team 10 storm tracker because there aren't really any individual features to point out at this point. This line just continues to just race across the area farther off to the east. So Nathan is down here just to the west of Vincennes as this line of thunderstorms moves through. And he mentioned hearing outdoor warning sirens. I'm not really surprised to hear that. There aren't any tornado warnings in effect, but when you have thunderstorms producing wind gusts as high as 80 miles per hour, sometimes that can do just as much damage as a weak tornado. So sometimes communities may see this line of thunderstorms approaching their area and they go ahead and sound that to warn everyone that there is some dangerous weather approaching the area. And remember, warnings are meant to be heard outdoors to get you inside to hear the latest information. So this continues to race off to the east anywhere from about 70 to 85 miles per hour forward speed on this line of thunderstorms. So it just continues to race off to the east. Some good news is that it's starting to tame down a little bit here in Terre Haute. Clark County, you're in the clear at this point. Cumberland, Coles, Edgar, Vermilion County. The worst of the thunderstorm has moved through. Still some light rain falling and some lightning, but the worst continues to dive off to the east. So the community is seeing the worst of the weather right now. Olney starting to see that move through. Getting ready to move into Sumner and Bridgeport. Just now getting ready to slide into Lawrenceville. This is going to continue to push off to the east. So if you're watching us down in Vincennes, get ready. This line of thunderstorms is going to be in your area here within the next few minutes. We continue to see this pushing through southern Sullivan County. So right now around Carlisle, you're probably starting to see some of the worst of the wind and this is going to be quickly racing across the Greene County line. So if you're in Jasonville down to Linton, you're going to start to notice the impact of these thunderstorms and then eventually now making its way into western Owen County. So the Vandalia area, Patrick'sburg, this is going to be pushing off to the east, eventually sliding down into Bloomfield as well. So if you're down here in Washington, if you're watching from Odin or Montgomery, Ligoti, Shoals, again, quiet for now, but this line of thunderstorms is going to continue to quickly make its way off to the east. So while it is relatively calm now, that that is going to be a different story. And as you've heard some reports from Patrice here in Terre Haute, at least there have already been a lot of reports of down trees and down power lines. So these thunderstorms do have a history of producing wind damage as they race across the area. And it's not just here in Vigo County. We've seen reports of power lines down and tree damage in Paris, Illinois, up into Danville. So pretty much everywhere this line of thunderstorms has moved through, it has been producing a lot of wind damage. And a lot of times when you have a big line come through like this, emergency management, law enforcement, all those officials are really busy trying to keep up with the latest information. So there's a little bit of delayed report coming through by the time we get it. So I think we have a live photo now back in Vincennes so we can see where that thunderstorm is starting to make its way into the area. Again, it is quiet here in Vincennes for now, but as you can see in the tower cam, there is some rain falling off to the south, but it's going to be a different story as we continue to see this line of storms working its way into the region. Again, this line moving very quickly this afternoon, anywhere from about 70 to 85 miles per hour. So it is going to be moving through rather quickly. There you can see another view of this dark, ominous cloud coming out ahead of this, these thunderstorms. That's what we call a shelf cloud, and those often form on the leading edge of these thunderstorms. They're pushed up by the strong wind gusts that are behind it, so the skies relatively light out ahead of it. You're going to see this big wall cloud coming through if you haven't already, and then the wind's going to pick up behind it, and then you're going to start to see the heavy rain and any possible hail that may be falling from some of these thunderstorms. Though, as I've mentioned, while we had hail this morning, so far a lot of those reports have kind of tamed down for us this afternoon. The main threat with this line of thunderstorms remains the potential for those damaging wind gusts in excess of 70 miles per hour. So we just continue to track this line of storms as it works across the Wabash Valley. 
Brazil seen some of the worst of the weather if you're in Linton or Vincennes. Get ready now because this is starting to move into your area. Patrice, back now, do you have some new information for us? We do. Firefighters are now on the scene of a house fire in the Edgewood Grove community, the neighborhood in Terre Haute, 119 Adams Boulevard. They are saying that it could potentially have been caused by a lightning strike. There are trees down on, in a, on a car. Um, Everett, the biggest thing we're hearing, lots of live power lines down. And, and I looked up some information that's very, very important. You have to always assume that a power line is live if you see it. Stay at least 10 feet away, and that means your kids and your pets as well. Sometimes you, you can't control where your pets go. Make sure they don't go out after a storm if there's a power line down. And if you're cleaning up the storm damage, say later this afternoon, tonight, tomorrow, do not remove any tree limbs near a, a live power line that's down. You have to wait until, even if it's, um, Again, you have to assume that it's live, even if you think that it's dead and you have to assume that it's live. So please, please be very cautious. There are a lot of live power lines down and utility crews are trying to get to all of them, but they're very, very busy. Um, and one more thing, between 7th and 8th on college, again in Terre Haute, um, there is a report of a live power line. We're also told that on Interstate 70, there is a tree down. I do not know if it is obstructing traffic. Um, Ohio Boulevard is newly blocked. We are told near 25th Street. Is it? It's a tree. It's a tree down. A tree is down. Rondrell Moore tells me that there's a tree down on Ohio Boulevard near 25th Street in Terre Haute. So lots of trees down, power lines down, and I'm very concerned about that house fire that potentially could have been caused by lightning there in Edgewood Grove neighborhood in Terre Haute. So these thunderstorms have certainly been destructive as they continue to work across the Wabash Valley. So we'll take the storm tracker back, and you will just zoom through where these storms are moving a little closer look for those of you watching. This is mostly through Putnam County at this point. If you're in Greencastle, you've seen some of the strongest wind. Just moving into the Cloverdale area now, if you're traveling on Interstate 70, if you know someone traveling on I-70, they're going to be running into the storms right around Cloverdale. Farther to the south, this is making its way into western Owen County. So if you're in Spencer, these thunderstorms are just Kevin's a few minutes away from your location. We'll go farther down to the south. You can see Worthington. This line of storms is moving into the area. Also, Linton starting to see these storms move through and Bloomfield as well. Knox County, if you're in Sanborn, this is starting to move into your area. Edwardsport going to be making its way through. Bruceville starting to see the worst of the conditions and also now the city of Vincennes. So we are starting to see these storms race into the News 10 viewing area, race through I should say. St. Francisville, you're also on the edge of these line of thunderstorms. Still some very heavy rain and some lightning being detected down in the southern part of the Wabash Valley from Clay County through Rich Richland County and also into Lawrence County. So we have another live photo coming in from News 10 Bureau Chief Nathan Springfield as these thunderstorms continue to move through the News 10 Bureau. Again, this is going to be down in the southern part of Knox County. Just look at how choppy the sky is as the wind really just is turbulent up in the atmosphere and is blowing all that around. So that's going to be underneath the shelf cloud. You see the cloud move through and then on the underside, that's what you're going to be seeing. And as he pans off, and I'm assuming this is looking to the west, it just kind of disappears. In the distance. That's going to be where you see the heavy rain, and that's where some of the wind is going to be associated with those thunderstorms as this line races into the city of Vincennes right now. So you've been quiet for so far in Vincennes, but that is about to change as this line of storms continues to move through the area. If we can go back to the uh, storm tracker, you can see that this line is just now moving into northeastern parts of Knox County. So in the Russellville area there in Lawrence County, it's already been through there. Oaktown down 150 towards Bruceville is starting to move through, and just now this line of storms making its way into the city of Vincennes. So if you're in Monroe City or Wheatland, you still have a few minutes or Decker, but this line is going to be quickly racing off to the east. Again, it's got some forward speed at times of 70 to 85 miles per hour. So we'll draw another uh, line of uh, time of arrival for you. If you're down there watching us in Washington, Odin or Montgomery in those areas, as this line continues to push off to the east. Again, this is all for this line of thunderstorms capable of producing wind gusts 70 to 80 miles per hour, and they do have a history of causing wind damage, certainly here in Terre Haute, and I'm sure in other parts of the Wabash Valley as well. So Edwardsport, 328, about two minutes for this line of thunderstorms to move into the area. Wheatland, 335. Odin 338, Washington, Indiana 341, and then eventually over towards Montgomery, Indiana at 346. So 
We still have about 20 minutes before some of these thunderstorms make it into the heart of Davies County, but they will be making their way there. And so far, they have not lost much of their steam as they quickly plow across the News 10 viewing area. Uh, looking through some of the new reports that have been coming in from the National Weather Service, um, we've had a report of trees, tree limbs down in Charleston. That's from that line as it moved through earlier. No surprise there. Uh, a little bit slower there. Again, as I mentioned earlier, right now it is so busy for local officials, whether it's emergency managers or law enforcement, they are busy trying to respond to these areas, block off roads, keep everyone safe, that sometimes the reporting starts to lag a little bit as it continues to move into the area. So we're going to continue to monitor that very closely. Uh, this thunderstorm has been making it through the Lawrenceville Airport. So I'm going to try to dig up a graphic here so we can see what the wind gusts are doing at some of our area airports. Um, because obviously this line of storms has been very strong as it comes through the area. It's going to continue to just move through the region and it has been producing some of those very strong wind gusts. Uh, I can't find the graphic right now, but we do know that that line of storms has been moving through rather quickly. So we'll go back and loop the Storm Team 10 storm tracker for you so you can see how this line of storms formed in central Illinois and just raced across the area. It is starting to spread out, so that is helping a little bit uh, to weaken some of our line of thunderstorms just a little bit, but it is still capable of producing those very strong wind gusts as it races off to the southeast at 30, to uh, or at 70 to 85 miles per hour. Here's a look at some of the wind gusts. I, uh, Storm Team 10's Aaron Peters pulled these up for me. Uh, the Lawrenceville Airport uh, there between Lawrenceville and Vincennes did measure a wind gust of 69 miles per hour. So again, this is why we're on the air. This is why we have these severe thunderstorm warnings in effect. This line continues to race off to the east. Uh, Alney, the airport there, recorded a wind gust of 44 miles per hour as the storm moved through. So as I mentioned, it's not going to be a consistent uh, line of of wind damage. There's going to be pockets in these thunderstorms that have some stronger wind gusts, and that's what we're seeing here in the Wabash Valley. Sounds like Terre Haute did see quite a bit of wind damage uh, based on the reports that we've been seeing from Patrice. So there you're seeing the wind gusts again. Dan, these are only reporting within the last 15 minutes, so that's why you're not seeing one in Terre Haute or Robinson, but in Vincennes, that's where that 69 mile per hour wind gust was, and that's at the uh, Lawrenceville Airport there between Lawrenceville and in Vincennes. So I want to recap all the warnings that are in effect for the News 10 viewing area. Here's a look at the Storm Team 10 storm tracker. We are now approaching 3:30. This line of thunderstorms continues to race off to the east, uh, producing some of those damage reports that we've been seeing come in. So we have active severe thunderstorm warnings that continue for Putnam County, Owen County, Clay County, and Park County until 345 this afternoon. And this is for that line of thunderstorms capable of producing 70 mile per hour wind gusts as it moves off to the east at 80 miles per hour. So again, the forward speed on this is very impressive. I mean, it's going faster than uh, some interstate traffic. Uh, just very quick moving thunderstorms as it races through. Farther to the south, also until 345, we have severe thunderstorm warnings for Green, Lawrence, Martin, Monroe, Davies, Martin, Knox and Sullivan counties. And then for our Illinois communities, we also continue severe thunderstorm warnings. We have one for Crawford, Lawrence, Jasper, and Richland until four o'clock Eastern time, so three o'clock if you're watching us there in Illinois. So this line of thunderstorms continues to quickly dive off to the southeast. It is making its way through Vincennes right now, making its way into uh, Linton, moving over towards Bloomfield. So if you're in these areas, get ready. This line of strong thunderstorms is going to continue to move into the area as it pushes off to the east at about 70 to 85 miles per hour, depending on the line of segments that you're starting to see this. Um, I think we have another live picture down in Vincennes as this thunderstorm moves through. Here's Nathan uh, getting us this footage. And you can see the heavy rain starting to fall there in town. The trees starting to blow around as the strong wind gusts make their way into town. So we are starting to see that down there in Vincennes. And uh, it looks like that part of the line was just a little bit weaker than what we saw in Vigo County, but it can still produce Produce some strong wind gusts, knock trees down on power lines. So again, if you can postpone your travel this afternoon, I would advise you do so just because there are so many trees coming down and so many power lines, it's going to be hard to tell where those lines are with the visibility as it is. So as this line continues to race off to the southeast, Storm Team 10 is going to continue to closely monitor this for you. We're going to send you back to regular programming for a little bit. We're going to regroup. We're going to work
work with the newsroom. We're going to continue to monitor this. Actually, we're going to stay with you with these thunderstorms as they continue to move in as this line races off to the east. So if you're in the Spencer area, this is going to continue to move into your location. So far, it's just been making its way through western Owen counties, and it is going to continue to move through the Spencer area. So unfortunately, Spencer has been getting rocked with severe weather this year. We obviously had the severe weather outbreak in March. Then we had the severe weather on Sunday with large hail and also some of that rotation. And we're going to continue to continue to see this move off to the east. We're going to continue to see this move off to the east with these thunderstorms moving through. So we're going to take a break here really quick and we will bring back with more updates. And we continue to track this line of severe thunderstorms working its way across the Wabash Valley. This continues to move through Knox County right now. It's pushing off to the east, moving through the Edwardsport area right now, and then continues to slide into Greene County. So you can see the Bloomfield area here, moving through Worthington and into the city of Spencer. So those are the areas that are starting to be impacted by this line of thunderstorms as it pushes off to the east. Again, the forward speed on these thunderstorms has been anywhere from about 65 to 85 miles per hour this afternoon. Kind of the fastest part of this line of thunderstorms has been along the north of Interstate 70, so it's already raced across most of Putnam County. So we're providing most of our attention now down in the southeastern part of the Wabash Valley. Still a lot of heavy rain and lightning falling down here in Vincennes. I believe we have some photos that have been compiled that have been sent in from some of the uh, storms that have been going through. This is up in the Paris area, and I believe there's also some photos coming in from Robinson. So you can see just some very large trees have been snapped by these strong wind gusts as this moves through. And that's why we've been staying on the air with you this afternoon. As these trees come down, they're knocking down power lines. They're falling onto homes, they're falling onto cars. And as it takes down power lines, it makes a very dangerous situation as many of those power lines are still live. So you don't want to be traveling or be around some of those power lines. We've heard from Patrice and Rondrell that continue to work in the newsroom of a lot of wind damage being reported in Terre Haute, several road closures due to downed trees and power lines and things of that nature. So again, if you can postpone your travel this afternoon, please do 
so, please try to stay home until these power crews, until the road crews can get out, clean up the debris that has been left behind by this line of thunderstorms as it races across the Wabash Valley. And once it's safe to do so, if you're coming out, looking out your front yard, seeing some of what's left after the thunderstorms, you can send your photos to the newsroom as well. You can send that to news10 at WTHITV.com, or you can visit our Facebook pages, and we'll be collecting some of those photos as well. As we know, there's been a lot of wind damage across the Wabash Valley as this line of thunderstorms just quickly raced across the area. I mean, around 2.30 this afternoon, we started to know this thunderstorm was coming through, and it has just continued. We're only about an hour after we started to see this enter the News 10 viewing area, and it's already made it through about two-thirds of the area. So, again, we're looking at the Storm Team 10 storm tracker. We have severe thunderstorm warnings that continue until 345 Eastern Time for anyone that's watching in the News 10 viewing area out ahead of this main line of thunderstorms. So if you're in Knox County, severe thunderstorm warning continues. Green, Owen, Monroe, Martin, and Davies County. So far in Martin County, you've had a little bit of rain associated with this thunderstorm here between Washington and Montgomery. A little lightning detected, but that is not the severe line most of the impact is going to be coming from this line that is moving out of Knox County. A lot of lightning still being detected here in Lawrence County from Bridgeport over towards Lawrenceville. And we continue to see that working its way through Greene County as well. So what I try to look for in this line of thunderstorms, where you're typically going to see the strongest wind is where there's a little bit of a curve to the segment. And I'm not seeing too much of that right now. It looks like this may be a little bit of a stronger part of the cell here, right in central Greene County, right over the Bloomfield area. That seems to be jutting out just a little bit. So that may be indicating where we're seeing some of that stronger wind. And then also farther down here to the south, it's been moving a little bit slower. So we haven't been getting as many reports from down there. But if you're seeing any damage in Vincennes, be sure to let us know about that. I'll step off so we can put the forward motion on this again, get some new times of arrival as this continues to quickly make its way off to the east, moving at about 75 to 85 miles per hour as we go over the course of the afternoon. We do know at the uh, Lawrenceville airport there between Lawrenceville and Vincennes, uh, it did produce a 69 mile per hour wind gust as it moved over the airport. So very strong wind gusts associated with this line of thunderstorms, and it just continues to make its way off to the east. So again, this is moving 85 miles per hour. So we're going to put the line of tracking down in southern Knox County first, and then we're going to drag it over into Davies and Martin counties. Washington 344. So it's going to be moving into Washington here within the next six minutes or so. Montgomery 349. So in about 10 minutes in Montgomery. Lagodi 354. And then right around four o'clock is when this is going to be moving into Shoals. So this line continues to quickly move off and it, when it's moving at 85 miles per hour, again, just think about driving on the interstate. That's faster than many cars on the interstate. So these storms just continue to race off to the east. We'll put another track farther and they've got a new radar update coming in. We'll put another track into the eastern part of Greene County as this line continues to slide through the area. So it is mostly through Bloomfield now and it's going to be making its way over towards Bloomington around 345 this afternoon as this line continues to produce wind damage across the News 10 viewing area. Patrice is back in the studio now. What new information do you have? We are told that trees are down everywhere, according to one viewer in Eugene and Cayuga. And this is very important. There's a semi that has blown over on 63 in front of North Vermilion High School. So that area in front of North Vermilion High School is shut down. The Park County Sheriff's Office is reporting, please avoid traveling south of Rockville on US 41. The highway is closed there, south of Rockville on US 41. It's closed due to many fallen trees and debris and that was posted by the Park County Sheriff's Office just 15 minutes ago. So everyone's trying to work as quickly as they can but these areas are probably going to be closed off for some time. Yeah, especially with how much widespread damage we're seeing. It's obviously going to stretch some of these crews pretty thin. So again, as we've been saying, if you can postpone your travel, if you don't have anywhere to be this evening, good idea to stay indoors. We're also told that from Nathan Springfield in the Vincennes area that many roads are flooded there. Um, um, as you know, the road is so hard, the, the ground is so hard and getting water that fast. And there is a train stopped on its tracks in Vincennes at 6th Street. And that's a pretty busy area, right. Vincennes and 6th Street, a train stopped. Lots of rising customers uh, are, are reporting outages as well in the Vincennes area. 
Okay, so a lot of power outages, a lot of wind damage being reported all across the News 10 viewing area. Unsurprisingly, as we've seen this line of thunderstorms move through, and we did just get a new severe thunderstorm warning into the uh, weather center here. Uh, this is going to be for the same areas uh, for the same line of thunderstorms. The original one was going to expire at 345, so this one is going to take us until 430 Eastern Time. It's going to include Monroe, Sullivan, Knox, Clay County, Owen, Martin, Green, Lawrence County, Indiana, and Davies County until 3, oh, that's the old one, excuse me, until 345 as that line of thunderstorms continues to race off to the east. So this is going to be for a line of thunderstorms located along that line extending from the Decker area up towards Spencer, moving southeast at 60 miles per hour. So in this latest update, they have slowed down the forward movement of these storms just a little bit, but they are still putting in the warning that it's capable of producing 70 mile per hour wind gusts and they're still including that quarter size hail tag with some of these thunderstorms. So, but, but as I mentioned, I haven't been seeing as many reports of that. That doesn't mean it's happening. But when you get a big line of thunderstorms like this, many times wind is going to be the main threat as this line continues to push through. So uh, some new reports coming in from the National Weather Service. These are from some of our Illinois communities. In Neoga, that's in northwestern Cumberland County. That was where we had some of these thunderstorms first come through. They're reporting extensive tree damage with some trees down on houses and residents trapped inside. That came from a storm spotter in Cumberland County. In Louisville, power lines down in Clay County, Illinois. Unsurprisingly, as many parts of the Wabash Valley I'm seeing are seeing that. And as you're seeing now, we're into the live shot in Vincennes. The worst of the storm has moved through Vincennes. You're obviously still seeing some heavy rain as we're taking this live picture, but the worst of the wind has moved off to the east and is moving into Davies County. Uh, we did have that report of a 70 mile per hour wind gust is what the National Weather Service is sending in from the Lawrenceville Airport as the storm moved through. Trees uprooted and snapped in Bridgeport. Uh, they're also there in Lawrence County. So again, unsurprisingly, we just continue to see a lot of uh, wind damage in our communities as this line of thunderstorms raced across the area. And again, you're looking at the Storm Team 10 storm tracker now as this line continues to push through. So it has made it through the majority of the Wabash Valley. We'll go ahead and just take a wide view uh, for anyone that just may now be tuning in. If you're down in Martin County, you may not know that there have been storms in the area if you've been outside, but you can see this line continues to dive off to the southeast. So here in Terre Haute, things starting to quiet down quite a bit for us. The worst has pushed off to the east, but still some very rocky weather just now starting to impact some of our southern Indiana communities. If you're in the Odin area, you're starting to see the worst of the storm. Now, this is just now moving into the city of Washington, going to be moving into Montgomery here within the next few minutes, eventually into Ligoti, the Crane area. Obviously, you just dealt with severe weather on Sunday, and now here comes another round of storms this afternoon. And this has mostly made it through Greene County at this point, but you're seeing a lot of heavy rain around uh, Bloomfield and still some lightning, but the most of the wind now pushing along the Interstate 69 corridor and going to be sliding into Monroe County. And Aaron, I don't know if you can pull up the severe thunderstorm watch graphic. It looks like we've got some updates for you. Um, we can go over to Max 2 to see the severe thunderstorm watch. The Main line of storms as it continues to move through, as we've been mentioning, is going to be moving out, and that's going to bring our severe threat to an end. So once we see the main line come through, that is going to be knocking down our severe threat. So the National Weather Service already trying to trim down some of our counties, and that watch has been canceled now for Vermilion, Vigo, and Sullivan counties. And most of our Illinois counties, the threat is over, but if I were to imagine the National Weather Service still busy trying to compile some of these reports, but once this line comes through, I wouldn't be surprised that that watch is canceled. Again, this is going to be the main threat for severe weather as we go through the evening hours. So we're starting to see these warnings trim down. We've made it to 345, so you can see a lot of the orange boxes have left our map now. So we're down to this main severe thunderstorm warning that is going to be for southern Monroe County, eastern Greene County, also most of Martin County, southern Davies, and southern Knox County. This is going to be in effect until 430 Eastern time. Uh, for that line of thunderstorms, again, capable of producing 70 mile per hour wind gusts. So most of the Wabash Valley, we're starting to quiet down, but there's still a lot of damage being reported from some of these thunderstorms. So what we'll do now is I will put another track on it. Again, we've got some new times now that they have slowed down the arrival of this line of thunderstorms. Uh, one time it was moving at 85 miles per hour. We're starting to lose some of that forward speed, so now they're 
tracking it at about 60 miles per hour. And that's a good sign to me because often if you get these thunderstorms that race very quickly, that means they're producing a lot of wind. That wind's kind of pushing them out of head. So to see that this storm is slowing down, that would generally indicate to me that we might be seeing some signs of weakening as this line continues to push off to the east, which also doesn't come as a surprise since we've already had thunderstorms rattle across this area. The atmosphere isn't quite as charged for this line of thunderstorms. So here are some updated times of arrival now for Davies and Martin counties. We have a uh, time of arrival for 347 in Montgomery. So if the storm isn't there now, it will be very shortly. Lagodi 354. Reeve 357, Bedford 404, and so this continues to quickly move off to the east through Davies and Martin counties. Uh, farther up to the north, uh, if you're watching us up in the Bloomington area, you're going to be seeing the area, the storm move through Bloomington 348, uh, Marshall, Indiana over in that part of the state around 356. So this is starting to move out of the immediate uh, News 10 viewing area over around Bloomington, but this continues to mainly impact now eastern Greene County, uh, southern Davies County, and most of Martin County is still under the threat from this line of thunderstorms as it continues to move through. And you're continuing to watch our continuous coverage as we still have this line of showers and thunderstorms working across the area. A powerful line of thunderstorms sweeping across the Wabash Valley this afternoon. Been producing wind gusts estimated at 70 to 80 miles per hour. And this line continues to impact southeastern parts of the News 10 viewing area. Just now moving through the Montgomery area there in eastern Davies County. Moving through Crane, getting ready to impact Lagodi and Shoals. So those are our main communities still left to see this line of thunderstorms. It is making its way through Bloomington now, but it's racing off to the east at about 60 miles per hour and it has been leaving a path of damage across the Wabash Valley. Uh, the newsroom has been very busy getting reports and so I'm going to send it over to the desk where Rondrell and Patrice will run through some of the information they've been receiving. We have a couple of updates to information that we have told you over the last few minutes. I first can tell you that that uh, potential house fire in mm -hmm. Edgewood Grove area in Terre Haute is not I'll a house it. fire, thankfully. Mm -hmm. It is a power line down, though, that is sparking. And, Rondrell, that's the biggest problem right now with this storm. Lots and lots of live power lines that are down, and they're very, very dangerous. You should not get anywhere close to a live power line. Don't get your kids anywhere mm -hmm. close, your pets anywhere close. And you can't control those pets sometimes. They're just very 
dangerous. And also, as things are cleaning up, you don't want to be lifting off debris from power lines because you don't know if they're alive. You have to assume that they're all alive. So um, the utility workers are super, super busy right now with all those power lines. Well, and one of the causes, trees are going into those power lines. We're seeing a lot of trees down in right. areas as well. That's causing a big headache for several people. Uh, one thing I wanted to tell you about, too, on Allendale or near Allendale on US 41, large tree down covering the highway at this point from what we understand. So it's only down to one lane in that area right near Gibalt. So obviously use some caution as you're traveling there. I understand we have a couple uh, some pictures that we want to show you of some of the damage that we've seen so far. You're seeing right now the storm moving through here. We're going to try to figure out exactly where this is uh, right now, but you can see just some really strong winds moving through the area. I'm going to read through some of the damage that we've had in Terre Haute First Street. Terre Haute, there is a blocked uh, road there. The tree is down as we just talked about. Lots of trees down. Lots of power lines down as well um, from Illinois to Terre Haute North Jefferson Street in Terre Haute. There is a tree down on a house in that area. So again, with a storm like this, uh, tree limbs, power lines, those are things that you're just going to really want to be looking out for because at any given point they could get away with trees. We are reporting that trees are down everywhere in the Eugene and Cayuga area. Mm -hmm. And please be cautious. There is a semi that has blown over on US 63, Highway 63 in front of North Vermilion High School. So please avoid 63 there. Also, the Park County Sheriff's Office is reporting to please avoid traveling south of Rockville on US 41. The highway there is closed due to many fallen trees and debris. Again, that's south of Rockville on US 41. And also Nathan Springfield in the Vincennes area is telling us that the tracks, the train tracks are stopped um, around 6th Street in Vincennes, which is a highly traveled yes. area as well. Yes, he also reported that Verizon reported several uh, down signal in that area. So it's just difficult to make phone calls. Whenever you see power lines like this down, it's just very difficult. Well, Verizon also uh, Spectrum, Spectrum and yes. um, Joint are mm -hmm. also also reporting outages. So uh, again, as Everett has said, it's those high winds, yes. huge wind gusts that he's been reporting that have been problems, getting the debris down, getting the power lines down, um, causing problems with internet. Mm -hmm. So um, continue to send pictures in video to yes. us. We would love to see those. Thankfully, it, there are not at this point, from what we're hearing, not a lot of reports of injuries. Thank God. So thank that's good. Absolutely. Now we did get a report on South Sixth Street of power lines down and a gas leak in that area. We're still checking to see exactly what may be going on there. But obviously, when we when we talk about those things, you want to make sure, like you said, you're staying away from those power lines. If you smell anything like gas, you want to get to safety. You want to call. Um, but also, when you're calling 911. Make sure they are for emergencies yes, only. Yes, they're very busy. Um, they are very incredibly busy right now. The scanner traffic is going uh, pretty, pretty intense at this current point. So you just want to make sure you're not using 911 for anything other than an emergency right now. Yes, mm -hmm. and as Everett will report, most of this has moved out of Terre Haute. It's moving into yes. um, to the east of us. So we will continue to bring you updates to the east of our viewing area. As you can see there, the storm tracker. So if you have reports of down trees, power lines, whatever it may be in Edsbert, Edwardsport, Washington, Ligoti, whatever it may be, please send them to us and be safe. Stay away from windows and things yes. like that with these high winds. Everett? All right, so yeah, we can look at the Storm Team 10 storm tracker and you can see where some of those strong thunderstorms continue to work through. This is going to be in the Washington area. Still seeing some heavy rain, but the worst of the wind has moved through. Down here in the southeastern corner of Davies County is where we're starting to see some of that wind pick up. If you're in Ligoti, starting to notice heavy rain already. This was a little cell that formed at head of the line and the main line has caught up to it. So you're going to notice the wind pick up here in Ligoti. Uh, northern part of Martin County up there around uh, the naval area around Crane, starting to see some of that heavy rain and shoals still quiet right now. It's about one of the only communities left of the Wabash Valley that hasn't been impacted by this main line of thunderstorms. But your time is coming as well as this line continues to dive off to the east, a little to the southeast, moving now at 60 miles per hour. So it has slowed down slightly. Earlier, the storm was racing to the east at about 85 miles per hour, and that just typically if you have a thunderstorm with that forward speed, that it is pushing it along very quickly, and that's what we've been seeing. Other notes, just by looking at this radar, what I find is some good news, not as many lightning strikes. So if you see a lot of lightning, that typically indicates how strong a thunderstorm is. A lot of lightning often indicates very heavy rainfall and also some hail. If you remember this morning, if you're in one of the towns that had some of the hail, just really noisy thunderstorms came through this morning. But this is 
is starting to weaken a little bit, not have as much lightning. Obviously, there is still some lightning and it can be very dangerous, but it is weakening a little bit. I think this is mostly a wind threat, and I think as it continues to push to the southeast, it's moving into a weaker air mass. This area already had thunderstorms this morning, and those storms used up some of the energy. So now that this line has made it into the area, it's trying to fall apart just a little bit. But you still need to take these storms seriously if you're down here in southeastern Davies County, if you're into the Martin County area. This is where this line continues to move through, but I'll step up so we can back up and see where else in the Wabash Valley we are still seeing some of the heavier rain from these thunderstorms, and that's going to be down in the southern part of Knox County. This is where we're seeing a lot more of that lightning. Now, right now, most of the warnings are just to the south of our immediate area, so there are warnings for Edwards and Wabash County and Gibson and Pike in Indiana, but for our Illinois counties, we are now warning free, and most of this continues to dive to the south, but still some heavy rain, still some lightning in those areas areas, which will just slow down the cleanup efforts a little bit more because obviously it's not safe for these crews to be out trying to restore power or clean up trees when there's still some lightning being detected. But a wider view of the storm tracker does show that we are really starting to quiet down across the Wabash Valley. Uh, a lot of the area has seen the worst of these thunderstorms as they quickly moved through the area. So the leading edge of the storms is now just making its way through the Indianapolis Metro, the 465 loop there, starting to make it through that region. So Indy's starting to see those thunderstorms and it is moving through Bloomington now and again the only part of the News 10 viewing area that hasn't been impacted by this line yet is going to be parts of Martin County but it is continuing to race off to through that direction at about 60 miles per hour. Still some heavy rain though falling from Alney over towards Sumner, Bridgeport and Lawrenceville from Vincennes over towards Edwardsport, Washington, Montgomery over towards Lagodi. So you still need to take these thunderstorms seriously as they move through but fortunately it is trying to calm down just a little bit. Some new reports that I did see come in from the National Weather Service from some of the other areas. Obviously, Patrice and Rondrell were updating you just a little bit ago with some of those reports. Uh, there was report of a porch collapse and a tree on a house uh, one mile northwest of Brazil and trees down in the area that came from a train spotter. So we have been getting reports now of some wind damage in the uh, Park County er or in the Clay County area. Excuse me. And then, as I mentioned, that line of thunderstorms moving through Indianapolis. As that line worked through, uh, the airport there in Indy did measure a 70 mile per hour wind gust. So that's why those warnings have been in effect this afternoon, and we have been seeing those wind gusts play out, and that is producing some of that damage in the area. Uh, Arch Street in Vincennes, Nathan is reporting, or Bureau Chief Nathan Springfield is reporting some damage in that area, and he's going to uh, update us now on what he's seeing. here along Hart Street in Vincennes. As you can see, there is a tree limb down on Hart Street, so it's block blocking uh, this lane here that takes you down past uh, the car wash, coals, that kind of thing. That tree limb has fallen down into both lanes of traffic. As you can see here, traffic is still able to move through. It is driving through uh, the turn lane and another lane over there, so just use caution if you are traveling in this area. Again, this tree did snap and go down here in the middle of Hart Street. Um, there is a lot of reports of trees down all throughout Vincennes. This is the first one I have come across. Come across. Um, I can tell you Hobby Lobby, Texas Roadhouse, Marshalls, and that area in Vincennes is without power. There were still cars in the parking lot, but there were no lights on at Marshalls, Hobby Lobby, or even Texas Roadhouse. It does look like Hart Street still has power. As you can see, Steak and Shake is lit up. Um, and the stoplights are still on. But again, some areas in Vincent's are reporting power outages. Another area that I have told that has some damage or that I witnessed myself was Highway 41, the southbound lane. There are several tree limbs down in the southbound lane about a mile before the Hart Street exit. So if you're coming from 6th Street, think of that area where you merge the three lanes in, then you merge heading up toward Hart Street. That area there has um, some tree limbs down. I am also told that Verizon customers do not have signal at this time in Vincent. I am working to confirm that and see if that is storm related as well. There is also was a train stop when I was over on 6th Street about um, 10, 15 minutes ago, a train stop that was causing backups in that area of town as well. We will, of course, continue to keep you updated. If you have any damage reports here in, in Vincennes, Knox County, or Southern Indiana, please share those with me. You can email them to me or you can post on my Facebook page. 
um, News 10 Nathan, or you can send him to the newsroom as well. For now, I'm going to throw it back to the station reporting live in Vincennes, Nathan Springfield, News 10. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Nathan. As you saw, he was there in Vincennes where he has been finding uh, some of the wind damage, and I'm sure that is a similar sight in many communities all across the Wabash Valley as we've been watching this line of thunderstorms race across the region. Our active severe thunderstorm warnings continue for Davies, the very southern part of Knox County, Martin, very eastern Green, and southern Monroe County until 430 this afternoon. So the worst of the storm has moved through many areas. Um, I'm on Duke Energy's website right now on the outage map, and I can tell you there are just outages all over Terre Haute looking at the map. And the latest number I saw had Vigo County customers by Duke Energy at 26,000 without power in Vigo County. And Rundrell, do you have more information? Yeah, I was just getting ready to give you those exact same numbers from Duke Energy in this area, more than 25,000 uh, without power. And again, uh, that's something that Duke Energy is working. Hold on. Let me make sure my mic is actually turned on so you can hear me as I talk to you, but just echoing your numbers, more than 25,000 people without power in Vigo County. Had a couple other damage things I wanted to let you know about. Um, there is a car, according to uh, scanner traffic, there is a car blocking traffic on Cherry in Terre Haute, and that is the entryway into West Terre Haute. So at the current time, according to uh, what we've been hearing from reports, uh, blocking going into West Terre Haute, so you want to avoid that area. Gas leak reported near Coles. That's on South US Highway 41. Um, again, we told you that there was a tree down not too far from that area near Allendale, um, blocking it down to one lane. So again, lots of activity in that area you probably should avoid at this point. We also got a report of uh, fire at the federal penitentiary. Obviously, we're calling to work to confirm those things. But again, the big story here, lots of trees down, lots of power lines down. Tens of thousands of people without power at this point, Everett. And, you know, obviously we're going to be working with Duke Energy to see how long it would take to get that power restored. But as it stands, as things are still moving through, uh, this is going to be a busy time for lots of emergency workers and those power line workers, Everett. Yeah, definitely. And we still have the rain falling in many of these communities. So a big thank you to all the power crews that are going to be going out there, the road crews, to try to clean up the mess that's been left behind after these thunderstorms have moved through. Uh, some of the other counties uh, that Duke Energy serves that do have those outages, uh, Vermilion County does have uh, 7,000, over 7,000 outages in Vermilion County, 540 in Sullivan, uh, just about uh, 4,500 in Putnam County. Uh, Park County is reporting 39 outages. So obviously Duke Energy does doesn't cover all of these counties, so some of those local electric cooperatives have some of these numbers, and I'm sure they are all facing these same power outages as these storms move through the region. Uh, if we can take one of our tower cams just so you can see what's left behind uh, here in Terre Haute, much calmer than it was when these storms moved through the trees and the flag was just really whipping in the wind. Uh, traffic still at least coming down Ohio Street here in Terre Haute. As we look off to the west, you can see the top of the Vigo County Courthouse there in the background. Still kind of an ominous sky, but uh, the threat for severe weather is over. In fact, um, an update now as we look at the severe thunderstorm watch graphic, uh, it has been canceled for all of our Illinois counties. As I said, that doesn't come much of a surprise to me as once these thunderstorms move through, that is going to quickly knock down our threat for severe weather. But um, all those counties shaded in pink, that technically continues until 8 o'clock Eastern time. I fully expect that in the next hour we're going to see most of these trimmed down as that line of storms continues to move through. So if you are watching us after the storms have moved through, you are noticing that things are quieting down and this line of storms was our biggest threat for severe weather. Uh, we have some more photos that have been coming in to the newsroom as these storms have been working across the Wabash Valley. That's that shelf cloud. That's probably going to be what many people remember from this thunderstorm as almost every person that was impacted by it. If you saw outside before the storm came through, you saw a very similar cloud to that nature. That is the shelf cloud that came out on the leading edge of that thunderstorm. Just a very ominous looking. I mean, look at the colors that are underneath that. Just a very strong indicator that we had those strong storms move through. Those are formed as the wind pushes out ahead of these thunderstorms, and that's exactly what we saw. And obviously, we've been getting those reports of wind gusts uh, estimated at 70 to 80 miles per hour, sometimes reported at 70 miles per hour down there at the airport in Lawrenceville and also the Indianapolis International Airport reported a wind gust of 70 miles per hour as these thunderstorms moved through. So very powerful thunderstorms coming across the Wabash Valley. If you have any photos that you'd like to send, obviously um, we're working to get more of this information from Terre Haute, but we cover many more of our local communities. If you have damage to report, you can send that in through our Facebook and Twitter pages. Uh, email the newsroom at news10 at WTHITV.com. Now that it is starting to get safer to get into the area or get 
get outside, you can report some of that damage, but do not approach any downed trees or downed power lines, as we mentioned. You don't know if those live or those wi those wires are live, so that can still be a dangerous situation. So let's run through the storm tracker one more time. We do have that severe thunderstorm warning that continues until 4:30 for our far southeastern areas. The only part still being impacted by the bulk of the thunderstorms. And at this point, it's the heaviest is moving through Martin County, but the leading edge has now pushed out of the immediate News 10 viewing area, working through Orange and Lawrence counties in Indiana. So Bedford's already seen the worst of it, but it's moving down towards Paoli and also moving through French Lick right now, which they also got clobbered by those thunderstorms on Sunday with a lot of hail damage. So the last thing they need is any more wind or hail damage from this thunderstorm. But we do continue to see the heaviest rain in southeastern Davies County. This whole line is racing off to the east at about 60 miles per hour. So it is trying to slow down just a little bit, but it is still a very strong thunderstorm and it is still kicking up some lightning and producing some heavy rain as it works to the southeast. And this heavy rain, we need the rain. We have drought conditions across most of the News 10 viewing area, but we got heavy rain this morning, especially in these areas, and the ground's very hard since we haven't had so much rain. So as this falls so quickly, it runs off pretty quickly. So there are also some issues with some standing water. Flash flooding could be a concern. We've had some flood advisories in effect for parts of the area earlier today. So if you are, if you do have to be out traveling, one, watch out for down trees and power lines, but also keep in mind that there could be some standing water in areas on the backside of these thunderstorms as we saw heavy rain this morning and now we've quickly added to our total as well. So those are going to be the main weather concerns that we see going forward. Uh, there is going to be a possibility for more storms as we get into the early morning hours on Friday. So we're not out of the woods entirely with these thunderstorms. This I think is going to be the strongest line of thunderstorms we have to deal with certainly during the uh, day today. But showers and thunderstorms do remain in the forecast as we go over the next few days. We've kind of entered a rather active weather pattern. We've gone so long without much rain and now this weekend we're going to be seeing at least a daily chance to see some rain. So we need the rain, but we didn't need it to come with these thunderstorms and we didn't need it to fall so heavily as it did here in Terre Haute. Here at the TV station, our weather observation is showing just about an inch and seven tenths of rain here in Terre Haute so far today. And I know there have been areas that have seen even heavier amounts of rain earlier. So what I'm going to try to do for you now is we'll see some of the estimated precipitation totals from some of these thunderstorms. Uh, this is going to be over the last 24 hours. So you can see the legend up there at the top of your screen. The storms this morning kind of formed over the same areas and continued to impact. So you get up into the colors, you get into the greens. That's going to be around two inches of estimated precipitation. These are not ground reports. This is just what radar has been seeing through the thunderstorm and is estimating what has fallen. You get up into the yellows. That's going to be four inches. You get into the orange and that's five inches. So notice down here in southern Knox County, there was just a lot of lightning down there this morning and they kind of got round two of that this afternoon. So that's why I'm not surprised Nathan has been mentioning that there have been some reports of some standing water in that area. Knox County seen some of the highest totals estimated by radar over the last 24 hours, but right through the center of the News 10 viewing area, radar estimating anywhere from two to up to four inches of rain, especially from Marshall just up to the north in the Oliver area, just to the south of Paris. That's where we had a couple rounds of thunderstorms this morning, producing some very heavy rain. So flooding is going to be kind of a minor concern, which just seems weird to talk about since we've been in those drought conditions, but especially when you get heavy thunderstorms like that, that can quickly cause some of those creeks and streams to rise, uh, cause ditches to overflow and things like that, especially since uh, the water has been uh, overflowing with the uh drought conditions that we've been having in the News 10 viewing area. So here's a look at the Storm Team 10 storm tracker again. You can see that most of the activity is now pushing out of the immediate area. So that is some good news. We're going to start to calm things down, but there is still lightning being detected. If you look here at the storm tracker, every once in a while you can see just one of these spots that shows a little lightning bolt. And those can be very deadly for anyone that's trying to clean up with uh, some of the damage that's out there because this could be a cloud to ground lightning strike. So crews are going to be working through the conditions to clean up some of the tree damage that we have, try to get some of the power restored. But looking at some of the numbers that we've seen, again, Rondrell came out, Duke Energy in Vigo County reporting over 25,000 outages. It's going to take a while for crews to clean up the mess that's happened. And it's not just in one area where sometimes you see one thunderstorm move through. I mean, this raked across the entire Wabash Valley from uh, Coles and Effingham County, and it now continues to just now exit Martin County. So we've been seeing that line of thunderstorms 
storms work through and it's going to continue to do so as we go over the next couple hours. But fortunately, the threat is winding down for us. The worst of the thunderstorm is over. So we'll go back and loop the uh, storm tracker so you can just see the progression of some of this thunderstorms. You can see right about 1.30, we started to see the thunderstorms work into the area. They quickly just raced across the region and then moved down to the south and that forward speed helped produce some of those strong wind gusts. And it looks like based on just some of the radar indications and the reports we've seen so far, some of the strongest wind associated with this line of thunderstorms was right through central parts of the Wabash Valley from Paris to Terre Haute. We had that warning issued earlier that might have triggered your cell phone alerts warning of wind gusts up to 80 miles per hour. I didn't ever see an official report come in from the airport here in Terre Haute how strong that wind gust was, but I wouldn't be surprised that we uh, see one of those reports come in just based on the damage that we've been getting into the newsroom. I can try to look that up for you here really quickly uh, just to see how strong that wind damage or the wind gust was as it raced through eastern Vigo County. Uh, sometimes the power goes out before those storms can move through, so we may not even have the official uh, wind gust with that thunderstorm. I'm not seeing one reported in Terre Haute, so I think that was the case. Actually, our Terre Haute observation hasn't updated there in Vigo County since 253, so uh, they might be facing a power outage or the storm might have damaged that sensor. Uh, there in eastern Vigo County at the airport. So we're going to continue to monitor this for you. Again, we have this line of thunderstorms working through the region. Most of the activity now trying to calm down. The newsroom is busy trying to compile the reports, confirm some of the information we have. We have reports coming in of damage all across the Wabash Valley from Paris to Terre Haute to Rockville up to the Cayuga area down to Vincennes. Uh, many communities dealing with the debris that's left over from these thunderstorms. Whole trees have been knocked over. Trees have been snapped. We have power lines down in many of these locations and uh, the worst of the storm fortunately moving out of the area. Things starting to calm down now in Washington and in Montgomery. Moving out of Shoals, you're still seeing some heavy rain down there in central Martin County. Uh, but the worst of the storm has now pushed off to the east into Bedford and in Orange County.
Welcome back to our continuing coverage here on WTHI. As we've seen this powerful line of thunderstorms work across the Wabash Valley, producing estimated wind gusts at times up to 80 miles per hour. But we have had reports of wind gusts at 70 miles per hour down at the Lawrenceville Airport and then also the Indianapolis Airport. So a little bit off to the east. But this line of thunderstorms raced across the region. The good news I have for you at this point, the worst of the thunderstorms have moved out of the entire News 10 viewing area. We still technically have a warning in effect for southeastern Davies County, uh, most of Martin County, eastern Green and southern Monroe. But you can see the main line of the thunderstorms has pushed well off to the east moving into the Seymour area now. So the worst of the storms are over. However, we still have a lot of rain falling across the area, just some light rain, but there are still lightning bolts being detected. A lot of reports have been coming into the newsroom this afternoon of downed trees and power lines. So if you don't have to travel this afternoon, I would advise you to just stay home, stay in this evening. A lot of power crews are out there trying to clean up the mess, road crews, just a lot of trees down. And you don't know if you see a downed tree, there may be a power line under it. So it can create a dangerous uh, driving situation if you are out on the roads this evening. But again, the good news is the worst of the storms are over. As we look at the severe thunderstorm watch, all of our Illinois counties that has been canceled. And as we look in Indiana, that's only in effect now for these counties shaded in pink. However, I wouldn't be surprised that we see this trim down here within the next hour or so. Now that that thunderstorm line continues to make its way farther to the east. So what we're going to do now is take a look at our traffic map to indicate where we might be seeing some of these problems. So if you're seeing the green that's where traffic is moving along as normal, but we've been getting reports of some down trees and power lines so that is going to be impacting some of those conditions. So we'll start here in Vigo County. You can see some slower traffic on Interstate 70 right there near State Road 46 at that exit on the east side of town. Also seeing some slower traffic down around Honey Creek part, so that's going to be down closer to Coles in the southern end of Terre Haute, and that's where we've been having some reports of damage as well, so I'm not surprised to see slower traffic there. Some slowdowns on Interstate 70 closer to the state line. We get into downtown Terre Haute. It's indicating some slower traffic throughout town and up U.S. Highway 41. Uh, we've also heard a report when Rondrell and Patrice were in here earlier of some uh, backup issues on Cherry Street going into West Terre Haute. Uh, over on U.S. Highway 40 going out east of town right around the Lost Creek area, we're seeing traffic slowed down and also on State Route 42. So just all over the Wabash Valley, we're just seeing those pockets of slower traffic and these could be caused by downed trees or downed power lines or at times there was heavy visibility and it just caused traffic to back up. But seeing some of those slower traffic areas around Brazil and on the interstate just to the south of Brazil. State Route 46, we're also seeing slower traffic from Clay County, extending down through the Vandalia area, some slower around Spencer and down into the southern part of Owen County. Farther to the south, a little bit of slower traffic on Interstate 69 and around the Lagodi area. But fortunately, I'm not seeing as many traffic um, issues in those areas. And hopefully that's a sign that those storms weren't quite strong as they worked through that part of the Wabash Valley. A little uh, slow traffic being reported in the Vincennes area, still in the medium category, so we're not seeing too many issues, at least on the main roadways down in our southern Illinois communities from Alney over towards Lawrenceville. We'll go up to Newton, just a little bit in the medium there, so not seeing too many issues that stand out to me there. Uh, we get over here to Illinois Highway 130 north of Greenup, a little bit of slower traffic heading southbound. Traffic backed up around Effingham, but that's not really too surprising with the construction that is in that area. And obviously heavy rain mixed with the construction uh, creates even slower traffic. Same story here just to the north of Martinsville on Interstate 70. If you travel this highway uh, frequently, you know that there's a lot of construction in that area. So that is probably more associated with the construction backup in that region. Uh, a little bit of some slower traffic being reported in Paris and along Route 1. Uh, there have been reports of lots of damage in the Paris area as well. And then as we go farther up to the north, uh, up on Highway 41 going into Southern Park County. A few slower areas being detected and also around Rockville. So there have been some traffic issues out there as we've been saying all afternoon. If you don't have to travel, uh, consider postponing your plans until we get a few more hours behind so those road crews can continue to operate. You're seeing some of the uh, radar indications now that the worst of the storm has moved out. So we're not expecting much more in the way of severe weather, uh, but we are still having some of those issues out there on the roadway. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to try to comb through some of the storm reports that have come into the National Weather Service and have made it into our weather computer. But this can be kind of messy because this is going to include reports from the past 24 hours. So that's also going to include reports um, that came in this morning from the hailstorm 
the hailstorms that affected us earlier. So we'll start over in the western part. Neoga thunderstorm wind damage. This was reported. Numerous tree line or tree limbs down and power lines as well. Uh, we do add multiple reports that. Neoga took quite a bit of wind damage from that thunderstorm. Uh, multiple large trees, one to two foot in diameter, were snapped. That was a report that came in from that area. Uh, here's one from Charleston. Three inch tree limbs broken in the city there. So those thunderstorms raced across Coles County. That was one of the first parts of the Wabash Valley that was impacted by those thunderstorms. Uh, we'll come into Vigo County where some of those new reports have been coming in through the afternoon hours. And you can see those just line up and down uh, U.S. Highway 41 at this point. So uh, this was just to the north of Pimento. Damage to a metal building reported. A uh, photo sent in from social media shows walls collapsed and a roof blown back. So that one came in around 3.06 this afternoon as that line worked through the area. That hail report, that came in a little bit earlier this morning from the line of storms that came through just before noon. Uh, we get into Vigo County. Uh, multiple ham radio operators report widespread trees and power lines down in Terre Haute. That's where we got our estimated 70 to 80 mile per hour wind gusts and that's some of the information the newsroom continues to work to confirm for you some of those different reports that are out there large tree down on Ohio Boulevard blocking all lanes Rondrell has talked about that uh, there on the east side of Terre Haute uh, we get up into the north side large tree fell onto a house power line also down at 8th and Indian on 8th Street there in Terre Haute so that's going to be on the north side of Terre Haute um, that came in from amateur radio. Also reports of some more wind gusts up there to the north. Thunderstorm wind gust of 65 mile per hour. That was an estimated gust at the Sky King Airport. So on the north side of Vigo County, Sky King reported a gust of 65 miles per hour as those storms moved through. We get to Brazil. We're also seeing one of those storm reports. Uh, that's where the porch collapsed and a tree on a house. Uh, trees down in the area. That came in from a train spotter in the Brazil area. So wind damage also being reported in Clay County. Not much right now officially coming in from Park and Vermilion counties, but we know the sheriff is advising people to try to stay off the road as they clean up some of the roadways in that area. As we uh, do have a lot of reports from Vermilion County, Illinois of downed trees, and that same line of thunderstorms did work across the state line and impacted those in uh, Vermilion County, Indiana. Farther into uh, Edgar County, we're getting thunderstorm uh, wind damage reports there in Paris as this line of storms came through. Power lines down, that's the only official one that's into the National Weather Service, but uh, and I'm sure many trees are down in town as well. Thunderstorm wind damage also in Brockton caused by uh, trees down as the same line of thunderstorms moved through. You see that uh, marker by Ashmore, that's a hail report from earlier this morning. Uh, they had ping pong ball ball sized hail there. So we've had multiple rounds of storms work through the area this morning and they just continue to uh, produce. Uh, first it was the hail impact and now it has been some of the wind damage. So farther to the south we'll get down into Vincennes. We're seeing a report of uh, thunderstorm wind damage. That was actually from this morning as I look at that one 743. That was from the early morning round of storms that came through the area over into western um, Lawrence County here. Trees uprooted and snapped in Bridgeport. Uh, same report there, trees and power lines down, um, reported by train spotters in that area. So again, this damage is widespread across the Wabash Valley. Many areas are uh, down dealing with the aftermath of these thunderstorms as they've worked across the area. But the worst of it is over. You're taking another look at the Storm Team 10 Storm Tracker now. That warning's holding on for less than a minute now. Once we get to 430, we will officially be warning free across the News 10 viewing area. So the worst of it is now pushing off into central and eastern Indiana. You can see a line of active warnings that stretch from the Muncie area all the way down to Louisville, just getting ready to cross the Ohio River there. Uh, Evansville ready for round two of severe weather as well as they also dealt with those thunderstorms this morning. So it's been a rather active morning, um, an active day across the Wabash Valley, but we've made it through the worst of the conditions as we look at the storm tracker. I'll go ahead and loop that for you so you can see where those thunderstorms uh, moved through the area. This is over the last hour, so I'll I'll go ahead and back this up. You can see for the last six hours, um, you can see that that line has just continued to move across the area. It's loading the data now. So here's the current look of the line of thunderstorms that's working through the area. And as we loop this over the last six hours, you see that complex that came across uh, east cent or central Illinois and moved down to the south. You can see it started around the Quincy areas when it really started to get its strength and then it quickly made its way to the southeast, producing that line of wind damage. But as we look at the radar returns, 
you can see how intense it looked right as it went through our Illinois communities, trying to fizzle out just a little bit, but still producing some strong wind gusts as it continues to move into the area. So we are going to watch this line move out of the area. We still have some rain left over on the back side, and this is the rain that's a little bit better for our drought convention conditions. We need a little slower, a gradual rain, and this is more what we're seeing rather than those torrential rainfall rates that we saw a little bit earlier today as that line of thunderstorms moved through. But I mean, not often that you see a line like this just impact all of the counties in the Wabash Valley, but every single one of our counties at some point this afternoon was under a severe thunderstorm warning as that line of storms raced across the area. Fortunately, uh, not as many reports of hail, and we've not gotten any reports of tornadoes or anything like that. But when you get strong wind gusts, especially if they're upwards of 80 miles per hour, that can do just as much damage as a weak tornado can. So while we didn't necessarily have any tornadic damage, the straight line wind damage can be just as bad. And that's what I think we're going to end up seeing as we go over the next few hours and crews continue to kind of scope out the damage and see what's happening across the area. So light rain continues to fall, but the worst of the thunderstorms are moving out of the area. The severe thunderstorm watch was in effect uh, for our Illinois counties until 5 o'clock central time. That has uh, been allowed to expire. They've canceled that early as that line of storms continues to move out. And this watch does continue for our eastern uh, counties until 8 o'clock technically, but I am expecting that to be trimmed down here in a little bit. News 10 Bureau Chief Nathan Springfield continues to watch these uh, the damage reports come in. He's down in Vincennes right now. Actually, we're having some issues again as We've been mentioning so many power lines down. There's been some communications issues, so we're going to try to get him again. Uh, he's down there in Vincennes trying to scope out the latest reports. He was with us earlier, and he saw some of that damage. Now I think we have Nathan Springfield, so we'll go ahead and send it down to him down in the bureau to see what he's finding there. We don't have and he's back out. So again, that's going to be the nature of us trying to get these reports to you. It's been kind of hit and miss, especially in some of our southern areas. Thanks to that wind damage, uh, knocking down power lines, power is out, internet is down. And so there are some communication issues that we will continue to deal with. But the newsroom is busily working for you, trying to confirm some of those reports as they continue to come into the newsroom. And of course, we're about a little less than a half hour away from News 10 first at five. And I believe we're going to try this third time's the charm. Nathan Springfield down in Knox County. We'll see if he has some new information for us. Out here in Vincennes, we are continuing to see more damage, this time on Bruceville Road. I'm going to step out of the way here. Old Bruceville Road is where we're seeing some more damage. Now, let me zoom in here for you real quick. As you can see, there is a large tree that is actually down in the middle of the roadway. This is just north of Hillcrest Road in Vincennes. The road is shut down to drivers. Um, road signs have already been put up, but it has brought down, um, as you can see, some power lines with it and everything. This seems to be seen all across uh, Vincennes, really. There are several trees down. You may remember earlier there was a tree down on Hart Street. Um, service is also very spotty out here, cell service. As you remember, Verizon has had some issues with cell service. I'm having issues with cell service, so if my picture freezes, do bear with me here. Um, there, again, are several trees down throughout all of Vincent's. I've had several of you send me pictures and locations. Continue to do that. I am trying to get around and survey all the damage here. But again, as you can see behind me here, that tree is down across old Bruceville Road. I've been told of trees down on Mentor Street in Vincent's. There are several trees down in Fox Ridge and then a well as well as a tree down on Hart Street. I've also been told of some possible damage on Main Street. I plan on heading over there next and checking out that, that area. Be sure to stick with News 10 and Storm Team 10. We'll continue to bring you the latest on the severe weather that has moved through the Wabash Valley, and I'll bring you the latest on the damage right here in southern Indiana. For now, reporting live in Vincennes, Nathan Springfield, News 10. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, thank you, Nathan, for that live report. Again, he's down in Knox County where those thunderstorms have moved through. Uh, Patrice just came in. Uh, they're busy working on the newscast, but Rick Berger with Duke Energy has told us that a lot of power lines down, so he's urging people to be cautious, try not to get out on the roads as they try to repair and restore some of those uh, power outages that are out. We've also got a report that power is out in Jasonville all across town, so a widespread outage down there. And we've also gotten reports from the Jasonville area of a lot of trees down in Shackamax State Park. So that's unfortunate. A very pretty state park in that area. Um, 
seeing some of the wind damage from these thunderstorms as they continue to race across the area. So speaking of those Duke Energy power outages, I will refresh the outage map uh, that they have on their website and we'll kind of comb through some of the counties here in the Wabash Valley and across the entire state of Indiana. So this is just the statewide total from Duke Energy, 52,855 outages right now just in Indiana. So again, this is not just a localized issue. There's a lot of power outages all across the Hoosier state. Clay County, they have um, 6,195 customers without power. Uh, we go down to Davies County, they're only reporting uh, one power outage at this time. But remember, Duke Energy doesn't cover all of these areas. There are a lot of local cooperatives that also have power outages. So uh, you probably have outages that are not being reported here. Green County served by Duke Energy, 415. You get down to Knox County, Duke Energy reporting 328 outages. Uh, farther to the north, Owen County reporting 349 outages, Park County 49, and we get to Putnam County 5,195 in Putnam, 1,278 Duke Energy outages reported in Sullivan County, Vermilion County over 7,000 there, 7,277, and Vigo County definitely seeing the most outages uh, being reported by Duke Energy in our viewing area, with the current number up from what it was a little bit ago, uh, currently stands at 27,000. 157. And just by looking at the outage map, fortunately we can't pull this up for you, but I mean the outages are just spread all over the city of Terre Haute. So it's going to take crews a while to get some of these power, these power restored to some of these areas and they are continuing to assess the damage that's underway. It may not be an easy fix. It may not just be where there's one tree down on the line somewhere. There could be multiple trees. So bear with the power crews as they continue to get out there, survey the damage and try to restore power to the area. Back weather-wise, the good news is we are now warning free across the News 10 viewing area. You're looking at the storm tracker, you were, but no longer any warning. So that's some good news there. And things are calming down here as we take a live look from our tower cam looking west here in Terre Haute. Traffic at least moving along okay here downtown going down Ohio Street. Uh, but we know that Ohio Boulevard has been closed due to some trees down there on the east side of town. So. No active warnings for the Wabash Valley. Certainly some good news to pass along. And the severe thunderstorm watch, another update uh, there. Uh, they have now canceled that as I expected. Uh, that would be canceled as those storms moved out of the area. So we are now watch and warning free across the entire News 10 viewing area. No longer under the threat for immediate severe weather. So we can breathe a sigh of relief there that the worst of the storms are out of the area but we still have some light rain falling in the areas. And now this is going to be transitioning into the cleanup and assess the damage that has been caused by this powerful line of thunderstorms as it moved across the Wabash Valley. But as we look at our temperature map, I want to point out it's kind of refreshing as well. It obviously got very hot the last few days. This uh, rain really helped cool us off. Also helped filter out some of that wildfire smoke. Very hazy conditions the last couple days from that wildfire smoke. First, we had a southwesterly wind today help push that out of the area. And now the rain's kind of filtered that down. So that has improved our air quality a little bit. And we're going to continue to see a southerly flow. So we've made it through the worst of the hazy conditions in the Wabash Valley. Also kind of a breath of fresh air, uh, quite literally almost with the rain filtering some of that out of the atmosphere. Many places uh, seeing temperatures in the 60s, including here in Terre Haute, our observation station reporting a temperature of 66. You see Sullivan there on the map, but if you remember, I tried to look up the wind gust at the Terre Haute airport and that observation is down. So a lot of these numbers, I wouldn't be surprised, Paris, uh, Terre Haute, Sullivan, those are probably some older observations that were taken just before those storms came through. Obviously, if the power goes out, it affects some of the reporting and uh, the Coles County Airport not reporting a number for us in Mattoon either. So uh, still a lot of damage being assessed across the area. Still some light rain falling in the area, uh, but it did come at a timely situation. Unfortunately, it wasn't the rain that we wanted. Uh, an update I can show you. The drought monitor was released today. Obviously, it is Thursday, and that's when we see that. And you can see that this update was taken as of Tuesday. So obviously, this doesn't factor in any of the rain that fell over the course of the day today, which in some areas has been over three, four inches estimated by radar. But severe drought was uh, put in place for areas along and north of Interstate 70, this darker brown color. So that's kind of middle of the road, not there's two more categories that are worse drought conditions, but severe drought was in place for many northern areas with our southern part of the viewing area in that moderate drought. Still some abnormally dry conditions detected down there in Davies and Martin County. 
But again, this was released this morning based on data from Tuesday. So that did factor any of the showers and thunderstorms that happened over the weekend. That's probably why Davies and Martin are just showing up as abnormally dry because they got a little more rain on Sunday from those storms. So we will see once we get through this weekend. Hopefully we can put a dent in some of these drought conditions because it's not just today that we have a chance that we had some rain. But as we get into the next few days, we're going to have at least a daily chance to see scattered showers and thunderstorms. Unfortunately, some of those could still bring the threat for some stronger storms with them. We've kind of seen a shift in our weather pattern, and that's going to be bringing us at least a daily chance to see some rain. Now going to be all day washouts. It didn't rain all day today, but unfortunately when it did, it was accompanied with those strong thunderstorms. So we're going to try to erase some of our drought conditions that have developed across the Wabash Valley. Unfortunately, it just came with some of those strong storms. So we'll take another regional look at the storm tracker so you can see this powerful line of storms as it raced across the region. Um, Right now, active warnings just to the south of uh, Fort Wayne from Muncie. That's kind of where that line starts going through the Connorsville area, Greensburg, Madison, Indiana, down towards Louisville, and then down into southern Indiana. You get down to Evansville. They are under an active severe thunderstorm warning. So that line continues to race off to the east, but you notice just how fast this went. We'll go ahead and loop this now for the last 12 hours, and you can see there is this morning's round of thunderstorms that worked through the region, and then we had this cluster of storms come across the area and then it moved through the whole area so it is going to be a busy day across the area uh, we had multiple rounds of showers and thunderstorms come through the area. There's this afternoon's round. So we started off the morning with a lot of hail storms in the area. A lot of reports of quarter to even up to ping pong ball sized hail early this morning. Caught a break. Sun came out in a few places and that helped fuel these thunderstorms to develop. This complex worked out of central Missouri, dove across western Illinois, and then came right through the heart of the Wabash Valley, producing all of that wind damage that we have been seeing. And that's where we do see those active warnings continuing in the uh, southeastern part of Indiana getting ready to push down into Kentucky. But fortunately, that means our severe threat has gone down a little bit. So we continue to work on News 10 first at 5 and News 10 at 6. The newsroom is busy making calls, confirming some of the damage reports, and we're going to continue to follow this situation for you um, as this line of thunderstorms has produced some widespread damage from the initial indications we've had across the Wabash Valley. A reminder, many power lines are down across the area. Duke Energy is telling us they just have a lot of outages. Uh, we've seen those numbers, over 27,000 outages reported in Vigo County alone. So a lot of outages here in town, a lot of those being caused by downed trees. So if you, again, we've said it many times, I know I sound like a broken record, but if you don't have to travel this evening, tonight would be a good night to stay home. Let the power crews get out there, try to assess the damage, assess the cleanup that they have in the area, try to get some of those uh, power outages restored, and then also allow the road crews to get out there and work. Because if you see downed trees, and especially, I mean, we're a few hours away from sunset, but you get into nighttime, I'm sure there's still going to be limbs and downed trees, especially on some of those secondary or back roads that aren't traveled as often where they don't know that there's wind damage just yet and that could create a hazardous situation as we go through the overnight hours on the back side of this system so and that's the best advice I think we can pass along to you. If you have to travel, obviously that's one thing, but if you can stay home tonight, I think that would be a good idea as they continue to try to clean up after this powerful line of thunderstorms swept across central Illinois. You can see all the lightning that was associated with that as it dove into the area. So again, the newsroom busy working on News 10 first at 5, News 10 at 6. We're going to have those newscasts coming up for you now in about 15 minutes, but we're going to send you back to programming. You've been watching Storm Team 10 with coverage you can count on. Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome to Family Feud, everybody. I'm your man, Steve Harvey. Well, we got another good one for you today, returning for the 